Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and this is a very special surgeon roundtable about six myths of mitral valve surgery. To examine and debunk those myths, I'm thrilled to be joined by three leading cardiac surgeons from Penn Medicine in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. During their extraordinary careers, Dr. Michael Acker, Dr. Pavan Atlery, and Dr. Michael Ibrahim have performed over 6,000 heart valve procedures. Great to see you, Dr. Acker. Always good to see you, Adam. Hi, Dr. Atlery. Hi, Adam. Hey there, Dr. Ibrahim. Thanks for having us, Adam. Thanks so much for joining me on this very important conversation. Dr. Acker, let's start with a confusing myth for patients, which is asymptomatic mitral valve disease patients do not need an intervention. Yeah, Adam, that's, that is a common uh, misconception by many, not all, but certainly by many, not only patients, but some physicians, even cardiologists. There's no question that symptoms are the hallmark of mitral valve leak or regurgitation or insufficiency. But there is a, a large group of patients that actually feel pretty well despite having a broken mitral valve and very severe MR. It's been shown now for about 15 years after landmark papers that patients that are completely asymptomatic but have severe mitral insufficiency must have some intervention in order to minimize their chances of going on to heart failure. And in fact, in well-done large studies, it's been shown that patients that are asymptomatic with severe MR that are just followed, their survival is less than patients that have interventions. Those interventions are basically surgery of different types, but ways of generally repairing the mitral valve, because that's what is really what you're, in the end, the bottom line you need to do. Very helpful, Dr. Acker. And moving on to an often misunderstood myth number two, which is patients with mitral valve disease who are either elderly or sick cannot be operated on. That is a common held belief among patients, among cardiologists, and among internists, that if the patients are elderly or sick, specifically lung disease, kidney disease, liver disease, frailty, cachectic, that they are too high risk to undergo mitral valve surgery. That's just simply not true. In centers of excellence that do this all the time, that have highly functional teams, we can get the high risk through these operations, treat their mitral valve disease, and restore them to a quality of life they seek. Dr. Ibrahim, over to you. A big patient concern in our community is myth number three, which is mitral valve surgery shortens patient life expectancy. I hear that a lot, Adam, from patients you know, who obviously have a lot of anxiety when it comes to facing a big operation like a mitral valve repair, whether it be robotic or through a traditional incision. You know, I would flip the, the statement on its head that actually mitral valve disease shortens people's lives and that we are lucky to live in an age where mitral valve surgery can restore normal life survival. Um, in, in good hands, a mitral valve repair should leave you living as long as you would have uh, if you had no disease and feeling as, as well as you can. Um, and doing the things that you love doing. And so, um, uh, you know, we, we believe that mitral valve repair can extend uh, survival. Dr. Atlery, it is your turn. And I get lots of patient questions about myth number four, which is robotic mitral valve repair surgery is not an open heart operation. Adam, that is certainly a myth. As someone who does this on a regular basis, as someone who's done hundreds of these operations, I can assure you that it is still very much an open heart operation. In fact, we're doing the same operation we would do through a traditional sternotomy through a smaller incision, utilizing either the robotic for the robotics or a high definition five millimeter camera if it's just a straight minimally invasive approach. The patients do benefit from this. They spend less time in the hospital. They recover quicker, get back to life faster. From a surgeon standpoint, there's certainly more complexity involved. So it's absolutely critical that you know that your surgeon is well-versed in this. What does that mean? How many have they done? 
how many they do on an annual basis, what are their outcomes, how often are they able to repair the mitral valve with good long-term durability, and then how long does it take them to do it? I've seen people spend hours trying to repair a valve, and I will assure you this is not good for the patient. We've been very focused on a near 100% repair rate with minimal operative times. And patients as a result have done very well, both short-term and as we follow our patients for years out long-term as well. Dr. Ibrahim, as you know, many mitral valve patients, up to 35% struggle with atrial fibrillation and a regular heartbeat. Myth number five is AFib cannot be treated during a robotic mitral valve repair. As somebody who performs a lot of robotic mitral valve operations, I can say that that is not true. I routinely perform atrial fibrillation operations, including the Cox Maze 4, um, especially important to, to know that we close the left atrial appendage, which is what reduces the stroke risk. Um, and patients are, are able to return to their normal lives without needing blood thinners in the long term through a very small robotic incision. Dr. Atlery, the final myth is all about newer technologies for mitral valve therapy. Myth number six is the mitral clip is not effective for low risk patients. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's a true or false, Adam, and whether that truly is a myth or not. And we won't know for some time. It might be five plus years before we have that answer. But given that we're waiting on two key trials, which are attempting to address mitral clip versus surgery in lower risk patients, I will tell you the data that we have so far will tell you that uh, there's very specific anatomy that is required for a mitral valve to have a successful clip and a good midterm or long-term result. If the right anatomy is not present, we know that the outcomes are suboptimal, and many of those patients go on to then needing surgery to correct the problems, often a very complex surgery. And with that, on behalf of all patients, I'd like to thank our mitral valve surgery myth-busting team from Penn Medicine. Thank you, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Great being with you, Adam. Hi, everybody. It's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.